Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about a day in the community college classroom. In a previous video, I spoke a little bit about the distribution of students that we have in our classrooms. I refer to this as the Six Sigma distribution of students. They come from a wide variety of backgrounds, experiences, and each has their own unique skills and life experience that they bring into the classroom. I'm going to talk primarily about education in the online environment as it exists today. And I'm going to take you inside one of my actual classes and show you some of the dialogues and discussions and assignments just to give you a, a glimpse and um, just a look into what a community college classroom is like. So let's start with a uh, class that I'm teaching right now. It's a e-commerce class. There's about 30 students in there, and one of the first assignments I give is introduce yourself to your classmates. So this gives me an opportunity to get to know them a little bit better and to, to find ways that I can make examples a little bit more relevant to them and to kind of make the, the class more interesting to the, each student. And I selected five students here to kind of give you a glimpse into what I was talking about as to um, how diverse the classroom really is and, and where the students come from and, and their ability levels. Uh, I have one student who uh, just passed her GED exam. I have another who's a stay-at-home mom. I have an international student. I have someone who's a furloughed worker. And I even have a retired medical doctor and cancer surgeon in my class. And this gives you an idea just really to shed some light on how wide a, a range of students I have in my particular class. Now, I also want to take a moment and point out that not all community college classrooms are quite as, as, um, as widely distributed as mine. I teach in the con Division of Continuing Education in short-term career ed certificates. So many of the students that, that land in my, my department are just like this. They, they're either trying to get a new job or trying to upskill at their current job or they might just uh, be pursuing intellectual interests. What you might find in other, uh, say, general education classes like your, your standard uh, freshman composition or calculus or sociology class, you might find it, it might kind of rein it in a little bit. You probably won't have um, retired doctors uh, in that particular type of class given that they've already done their general ed. So that also lends itself to um, how even within the community college there's different um, levels of, of diversity depending on um, each specific program area and what the students' goals are. For more information about those topics, uh, see my video on the community college student. So I want to take you inside the uh, canvas shell. I call this going behind the canvas curtain so you can get kind of a, a look into what the students are saying when they do their introduction. Here we have uh, my student who just uh, earned her GED in June, wants to take a few classes that will look good on her resume. I asked them to talk about uh, their favorite food or ice cream or whatnot, just as just a little fun thing to share about themselves. Um, and then another student here, I'm a single parent of a beautiful five-year-old. I want to learn as much as I can about online business so I can have a stable income for my family. Excited to go back to school again after taking a long break to better myself. And then we go on to uh, our furloughed worker who already has her degree from Cal State Los Angeles, uh, a business degree in 2016. And then below that we have an international student who is uh, here in the United States from Taiwan, already has a job, um, wants to learn more knowledge, uh, taking marketing classes for continuing education. And then over here on the right we have my uh, retired surgeon here in the class and um, wants to learn more about e-commerce and so there you go and there you have it. This is kind of um, what a, a introduction assignment would look like and discussion. And now I want to kind of bring you in just I want to bring it even more focused on the example dialogue between two students and this is a, a great example of how when you moderate a discussion well 
that you can get the students to collaborate with each other. And here, just kind of naturally, um, one of our students um, asked another student, um, you know, why she thought her uh, business was unsuccessful. Uh, what do you think you could have done differently? What did you learn from the experience? It's almost like this student right here wants to, to be my teaching assistant or uh, to <laughs> help facilitate the class. And, and this happened all just kind of organically. The student just had a little curiosity about um, what happened with the other student. And, um, and, and the other student went on and just talked about, and this is very insightful, just talked about uh, why she thought that uh, her business didn't do very well, um, talking about uh, the expenses related to running a business, and so on and so forth. So this is this really kind of gives you an idea how the um, the diversity in the classroom can be very enriching. We have a student that already has some um, business acumen, that already has a little bit of a business background, that's even tried to r run a company and, and was unsuccessful in so doing, and and so that gives you um, um, just an even greater example about how the diversity in the classroom makes us all a little bit smarter. And if you haven't seen the article yet that I linked from Scientific American about this, I, I urge you to take a look at that article because I think that it really talks about these ideas in greater detail. So let me talk about assignments here. And I want to, I want to tell you about one of our largest instructional challenges at teaching at this level is that we have such a wide distribution of um, students with different abilities and, and different skills that they come to us from all different uh, levels. So kind of one of the instructional challenges is crafting an assignment that's sufficiently challenging to engage the advanced students, but it's not too difficult for the less advanced students. And that's where the teaching experience comes in, and that's why um, ours is, is a practice, it is a craft, it is um, a, a process that is full of many iterations. Um, the, the, the difference over the course of teaching an online class, even a face-to-face -face class, over the first two years is your first semester it can be kind of clunky, you're trying to kind of smooth everything out, you, you, you have to get all of your, your assignments fine-tuned and you have your discussions and get everything kind of calibrated and then the next semester it gets a little bit better and then by the third semester it's just a pretty well-oiled machine and, and you go through these different iterations um, as um, my my mentor and um, one of who I think is one of the, the greatest professors of all time uh, the late Tom Garrison at uh, Orange Coast College was fond of saying that it's a very Darwinian process, meaning that the things that work well will tend to stick around and the things that don't work well tend to die off very quickly. So I want to show you an example of the uh, final project that I give in my digital marketing analytics class, which is a marketing experiment. And um, I'll take you inside of my canvas shell here real quick just to, to show you what, what this looks like. Okay, so here's my final project, and here you can see that there are seven steps to this, and it's, it's a very involved project. It, it represents a very large portion of their grade. Uh, I think that some of the things that are uh, very important are to articulate a well-defined rubric that talks about the major areas of the assignment to make that very clear to the learner. Uh, I also created a four-minute video here. Hey, Professor O here, going over the directions for your marketing experiment assignment. This is the signature project for this course. I look forward to seeing all of your results and reports. And in here, you know, I'll, I'll kind of fast forward the video and a little the bit. And goal. Um, I'll fast forward the video here a little bit. The, the point is that um, I, I give very specific directions here then I create a rubric and then I also create a video not only explaining the directions but then on the, uh, the, the right column of that, that video I show an exemplar. So um, I have found over, over the years that, um, that um, creating uh, an assessment, an assignment like this in, in such a way that the students are receiving the information in um, multiple methods of presentation. They get 
um, a text presentation here, they get some audio and they get some visual here, and then they get a rubric that, um, that really spells it out very clearly for them. And so that's kind of a day in um, the assignment area of that, and then obviously there's the grading that goes in behind that. Yeah, so then, so then after the students turn that in, there's a, um, a feature in Canvas called SpeedGrader that en enables you to grade their assessment. So I want to leave you with a, a few of the guiding principles that I've I've used over the years and, and gone through many iterations in, in serving our student population. And the three things that I think are important to keep in mind are the relevance of what you're presenting, the way that you present the material. You want to find ways to make that relevant to them. You need to know your students in order to do that. You have to learn as much as you can about them during the first few weeks. And you make your examples as relevant as you can to their interests and goals. Second is precision. Of course, the class content needs to be current with the field. Ideally, that could be related to some life skill or job skill. And then the third is results. And that's, it's important to make your expectations clear and results oriented. As I pointed out with the, uh, the grading rubric and whatnot, that, that's of just vital importance. Uh, give clear directions, provide examples, and to use frequent checks for understanding. So, in, in closing, I want to use a, say a quote here by uh, Henry Ford who said, coming together is a beginning, staying together is progress, and working together is success. And I want to thank you again for being here. I look forward to meeting you online. Take care.